There we go. Okay. So I know I have at least two on here. I don't know if they were the ones I wanted. I really hope they didn't flow off the edge. Oh no. The water has uh, s done something very strange. Shoot. Yep, okay. Gonna have to add some more. Uh, I think. <sighs> In my attempt to not squish them, I added some some sand, which I don't think was all the same size, and so the cover slip was uneven, and the water flowed away from where the worms were. I hope they didn't get stuck. I may have added too much. Shoot. Well, I'm learning. Sorry that I'm zooming around so much. I just sort of know. Whoa. Uh, Snowy Koi, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I would also like to find this nematode. Uh, yeah, okay. Something's, uh, something's going on. Okay, try again. Take two. I'll not dwell on that too much. Ooh, yeah, there's a big piece of something. Maybe if I just remove that? I hope the uh, worm isn't just on the big piece of dirt that I accidentally included. There we go, okay. Nope, okay. This is very frustrating. Okay, we'll try that again. Let's see. Plenty of worms to play with, though. Actually, before we try it again, why don't we actually look at like the dumpy ones? Because the dumpy ones are so much fun. Um, so these are wild type, if I remember correctly. So if we kind of, I'm gonna get out of this. Uh, yeah. So they're nice and long. They're pretty fast. They make that nice little, uh, uh, you know, sine wave motion, whatever you want to call that with the regular intervals. Dumpy, I don't know exactly what they are, but they don't look like that. Whoa. Atzel Pretzel, thank you for the follow. 
double follow in a very short amount of time. And here are the dumpies. <laughs> the sad worms. They're all ganging up in one spot for some reason. Lots of different uh, sizes though. So dumpy, I should look this up on worm base. I can't remember if dump, so dumpy is a phenotype, but I don't remember if it's specific to a gene. Worms are shorter and stouter than control animals at the same developmental stage. Well, that seems about true. Um, but what is, is dumpy a, um, oh, it's a gene class. Are they, are they related genes? Oh yeah, Dumpy 1, Dumpy 2, Dumpy 3, Dumpy 21. This one is Dumpy 10, okay. Dumpy 10. Uh, genomic position, is it a known gene? There's a lot of information on it. Okay. Well, these are fun. See, if we could race them, then we could maybe see how 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 good wild type is compared to dumpies. Okay, I'm gonna try. Okay, I'm gonna try to collect these because they're all nice and lined up. Gotta find my, my paper. Predicted to be part of collagen. Interesting. Okay. Fascinating. Okay. And I'm gonna try to do it the way you told me to, which is to touch the tip to some bacteria and then touch them. Where did my pipette go? It's behind me, okay. That's not working, I'm angering them. Okay. Phase two, I'm just gonna sweep and scoop. All right, I must have a good set here. <laughs> you should have sent me a worm pick. You described to me though, like you can, I can make a worm pick with like an eyelash, right? I just need to get enough on here so that when I Put some, a little bit less sand down, a little bit of levamisole, that I won't lose them immediately. Okay. So that should paralyze them. I'm going to be really careful with this uh, sand business. OK. 
Okay. Hopefully that's good enough. All right, there's a little bit more 3D than I thought it was going to be. Sand is so much bigger after you put it under the microscope. Okay, let's check this out. Haha. -ha. Dumpy worms that are also paralyzed. Nice. Okay. Now we're going. So presumably they're more or less the same <laughs> anatomically, except they're dumpy. Although maybe that makes them harder to look at now that I'm now that I'm seeing them. So we're going to zoom in all the way and just see what we can see. Hopefully not crushing. There we go. Rai Cerrone, welcome, welcome. Yes, more microscope fun. We're uh, looking at some C. elegans right now. They are microscopic roundworms. That are literally everywhere. Maybe not maybe not this specific species, but they're everywhere on everything. Yeah, these are unfortunately a little tougher now. <laughs> I got them, but they're harder for me to tell what is what. Because they're all squished together. Open that up a little. I'll look at a smaller one. is they are very pretty I think back to the big one yeah see this just motivates me to try and go get a wild type one all right so they have a pore on the side of their bodies which I believe is just called the vulva which I think is what we're looking at right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did my mouse just die? <laughs> That's the vulva. Yep. Hello, mouse. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if we go... Yeah, rip moss. It, it's working now. It's working now. <laughs> Too hot for Twitch. Yeah, we're kind of very zoomed in right now. Yeah, let's go back to uh, let's let's compare. Get my uh, where's my microscope? There you go. Ah, she moved out of the way. But yeah, that's uh, right here, right there. Except not right there, because you moved out of the way. Yeah, hello, James. How are you? Careful I don't get reported. This is some Twitch After Dark stuff. Well, just don't tell anyone. Slash, it's for education purposes. That means it's okay. Um, let's see. Let's see who else is stuck here with us. Got a little one right there. Ooh, this one's nice and uh, extended. You doing well? That's good to hear. See now, yeah, now I'm just really itching for a wild type then. Oh, come on, microscope. 
I mean, speaking of 3D printing, I just need to fix my microscope stage. I need to spend more than the five minutes designing the uh, slide holder so I can actually move things the way I want them to when I want them to. There we go. Okay, okay. So that went better. Um, I think I'm gonna try back. I'm gonna look through my slot, my um, what am I trying to say? My plates, not dumpies. I'm gonna find a nice and populated wild type ish strain. I don't want anyone sterile. That's a good one, I think. Got two. Two that look well populated. So we'll leave. Leave these dumpies alone. They were my uh my tests. <laughs> Welcome to only flagellum. <laughs> Not safe for work, paid subscription service. Okay. Oh yeah, these are very, very lively. Are those eggs? Yeah, quite a few. So we gotta find some big ones. Ooh, like these. Yes, 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 yes. Embus, welcome. Um, these are C. elegans. They are a nematode, the lab strain nematode. Yes, um, our mod uh, Brian sent these to me via FedEx. So we're checking them out. Um, I really want to get a couple of these under the slide, especially these right here, which you can even see the uh, the O sites inside of them. Again, Brian, you have to remind me, just tell me if I'm wrong. That's what the line of very large cells down the midsection are. Because uh, so they are either hermaphrodite or male. So if I see big cells on one side, then the sperm have to be on the other. Um, the sperm aren't too big, are they? Because because right, it's like male or male gametes go around one end, female around the other. Yeah, now I'm just trying to catch some of them to get them under a slide, so I can uh, paralyze them and look at them even more closely. They're mostly hermaphroditic. Okay. Where'd, where'd that one go? Also, just like lab culture sort of thing, when you refer to the nematodes, do you say like he and she? Like what do you call, like in lab when we refer to individual flies or groups of flies that we that we separate by, by sex, we do say she and he. Do you say she? For the hermaphrodites just just curious there's two arms both make sperm first pull it in the pouch and then switch to oocytes which pass through the pool of sperm to get for uh fertilized ah okay okay yeah i want a big one like this one the two they're so fast though so so fast okay we do mom or she i see They are, I mean, I'm looking at this like down on the plate. They are cruising. They're so fast. Where'd they go?
don't know if I'm actually getting any. I, I'm just like scooping very lightly, trying to brush the, the plate. I'm kind of worried I'm just scooting them around, probably killing or harming them. Okay. Plan, uh, plan D, plan E at this point. Add a little water, swirl it around, suck it up. That's what I'll do. I used the wrong one. Okay. Okay. Come on. So I think I actually did get some, very happily. Oh my god. OMG, I committed genocide. I'm a monster. Well. They're worms. Ah. They are unhappy worms. Is this a big one? Yeah, that's a big one. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Ooh, nice. Look at look at them oocytes. <laughs> now, if, oh, and an egg right there. See, I'm getting things. I'm getting things that I asked for before. Just had to wait a little bit. Okay. Now, I forgot to add the levamisol to paralyze them. Great. So I'm gonna have to add it to the side. Before then, I do want to show off my new uh, chow, my new something just finished over here on the side, which tells me that I think it might be working. I want to try this quick. I'm going to show off my new chat reward. I don't know if this is actually going to work. Wait, wait. Double check. Let's try this. Hey, it worked. There we go. So I want to do that. Is it going to go away? Yeah. So I want that, but I want that to work for the, uh, like the, the microscope, right? I just got to figure, I just doing a couple tweaks. So right now it just does it for my camera, which is, like, is, is cool, but not exactly what I want quite yet. Okay, okay. Levamisole, Levamisole. Where is my Levamisole? There you are. I also need to add some sort of like sound to it so I don't, whoops, so I'm not looking away the entire time. Okay, I added in the paralytic. Oh, what happens to the photo? Does it get saved somewhere like to share on social media? This opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Did she just pop? 
Did you see that? Shit. What just happened? Brian, her water broke? That's a good question. What? Is she heating up? Uh, sorry. Uh, right. So that picture does not get. S oh, oh my God. Is that supposed to happen? Is that a good, it, was that laying an egg? Ah, someone clip that, please. How, how do I clip things? I don't know how to clip things myself. Oh my gosh. It, it, she's just laying her egg. Well, it seems like she's laying multiple eggs. Is that supposed to happen? Thank you. Also, not just. This is the miracle of life. Oh, so special. Do you think that was in response to the Levamisole? She's a little squished. Yeah. Yeah. I know. All right. Well, before she explodes. Oh, thank you. Before she utterly explodes, let's zoom in. Uh, sorry, Rye. No, they are not saved. Would I like them to be saved? Yes. I, I have a previous... Uh-oh. I have a previous uh, uh, sort of command that would automatically post things to Discord. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm trying to do something. But that kind of broke for some reason. Why am I not being... Um, so I would like these little snapshots to be saved to the Discord. Yeah, I just hope I don't squish her. Ah, there we go. You don't know much about what you just witnessed? Well, so, oh, you want to know more about what you just witnessed yeah so the C. elegans um they as i am continuing to learn because i don't work on them brian does though he's been telling me all about it so far they exist either as male or as hermaphrodites something's going on here uh hermaphrodites uh, make sperm and then they switch to making eggs which then they self fertilize uh, they fertilize uh, in the body and then get laid as eggs which is I think what we just watched or no which is what we just watched not that I think um, however to make these them sort of stop moving I added a solution containing something called levamisole which paralyzes uh, roundworms like this. Oh, yeah, here, oocytes. So, see here these like square shaped cells with a circle in the middle? These are oocytes. I believe the circle is the nucleus. So, like these. Whoa, I'm moving the wrong thing. This right here. So, these are these are eggs or, or soon to be eggs. They're growing as they move from the red arrow towards the yellow arrow. Oocytes, um, oh, things are moving. Why are things moving? So 
something's happened. Um, okay, uh, it's it's um, oocytes are are not eggs, but they're on their way to being eggs. I think technically an egg is called an ovum. So they're so they're as as they're moving down the the worm, they're getting more and more mature. Oh, until they pass through the pool of sperm where they fertilize self-fertilize. Sorry them, this is so difficult to move right now. And then so Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but these don't look like the others. So whatever these are must be the actual embryos. So fertilized, right? Did my fan turn on suddenly? No, I think actually what it is, is um, just the slide is drying out. So the water is moving uh, through the underneath the cover slip. Uh, eventually they end up on this side because it happens on both sides. Uh, and then they get pushed through. Yep, those are fertilized. Yeah, push through and we get these these embryos. Yeah, I'm going to just look through the other side now. It's getting very hot, actually. Come on. I, I, I have to do something about this microscope. It's just so annoying the way it does not respond the way I need it to. Did I just lose it? Yeah. All right, she's been, she's pushed out like three eggs. I feel like that can't possibly be all that typical. Right? How many eggs do they lay per, per minute, per second? Oh yeah, look, okay. Yeah, you can see like the clear transition from oocyte to uh, embryo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty obvious now that I'm looking at it. Where the transition specifically is, I don't know. But the cells, like you don't need to know much about what's going on to tell that the cells, so we're looking, where's my yellow, my red arrow I mean. We're looking to the left of this line right here that I'm tracing. Those are the embryos or oocytes, they go through births. Okay, cool. And so the oocytes down there by the red and the embryos up here by the yellow arrow. That's good news as you rarely know what's going on. Uh, also welcome, Twitch guy too. Are there any sausages left? Um, no, there aren't any sausages left. Uh, and that's because I ate them. I was gonna serve them two people yesterday. The texture didn't quite turn out what I wanted, but they still tasted good, so I ate them. They'll lay a couple, then go quiescent for like 20 minutes, then lay a bunch more. Huh. My mouse is, uh, has chosen to die. At some point, I had my, yes, I did have my own sausage. I had a one-man sausage party. Okay. Oh, I don't want those arrows on there. Okay. Let's uh let's go towards the head again. That is the tail. I thought that was going to be the head. Ah. Eggs. There she is. That beautiful face. All right, let's um let's see if I got any more uh some different stages. So that's a younger one. Very lively. Let's was that an embryo? Yeah, so that embryo looks a little further along maybe. Look at all those bacteria though. Just hoping for something a little bit farther along. Let's see you. Oh, little guy. Whoa. Why are there... S ah, oh, look at... Nice. 
Look at them writhing around. Just trying to center this. They're waiting to be born. How long do they go from egg to worm? So uh, I, I looked this up previously, um, like an, uh, on stream. Uh, it sounds like about 13 hours from the time that they are fertilized, which happens inside of the worm. Um, and I don't know how long it takes to go from fertilization to hatching. But yeah, not too long. So these were fertilized, I don't know, sometime last night. Potentially while I was still having my party. Actually, I guess it didn't go that late, so no. So, like, it doesn't take that long at all, really. I'm trying to, like, just discern what their movements are. I, are they, like, tumbling? Or are they r swimming around? Yeah, they're kind of going in circles. That's really cool. I would love to see one hatch. Ex utero, like nine hours. Okay, okay. So these were laid sometime within the last like eight to nine hours, right? Because they're they're almost trying to they're almost ready to come out, pop out. They like <laughs> they look like you trying to find the gold side of the pillow. Or just like me trying to sleep normally, because I do I uh, do barrel rolls in my sleep. Much to the chagrin of my significant other. Oh, and there's a big worm next to them. A big unmoving worm. So she must have gotten a good dose of the Levamisole. Actually, it's very. Come on. No, 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 no. So that's the mouth. She's dead, Jim. Ooh, that's a good I should find that for a for a chat command. Oh wow, you can see the ridges of the like outer cuticle. Or cells? I thought I thought like on I thought seal guns on like EM were uh sort of circular. Uh C elegans EM <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've I've been present for the birth of every creature in this petri dish. I mean that's a joke, but also it's I feel like it might technically be true even now. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, here. <laughs> that's what we're seeing. I think that's what we're seeing right now are these, like, outer, these outer ridges. Just on the thing. It helps them trust me. <laughs> I, you know... I, I I wouldn't lie that if 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 working at Jurassic Park was a career choice, that is abs absolutely where I would want to work. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of weird, like you know, you like I grew up with Jurassic Park. To go from like being like wow the science Mr DNA or whatever his name is, like wow super cool I love it, um and like oh wow Doctor Wu a geneticist that sounds so weird and interesting. And then now as an adult, I, like, I am a geneticist. You learned nothing from the movie. Yeah, the only thing I've learned is that we should do it. Dr. Wu, I wouldn't say was my hero, because I don't feel like he had, he was not given enough screen time. But that's, uh, but I, I, same, I have the same sentiment. They, they did give him a bad rap. And I haven't seen the newest movie, but I feel like he's semi the villain now, which sucks. Oh, wow. I feel like this one is, she's also ready to pop. 
and give birth. Actually, there's some movement. Maybe if we watch long enough, we'll we'll see it. Ah! Why is she moving? Don't. Let's just. Oh. Let's just uh, examine this worm's uh, birthing process. Maybe. Because we can also keep an eye on this other, this egg over here in case it starts hatching. Uh, oh, BD Wong. Yeah, I love BD Wong. Um, I was going to say, see, again, I'm still, I'm still, no, 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 don't, don't derail us. Don't derail us. I have an emote specifically because I get derailed so often. It's my, uh, it's my rabbit hole emote. Are there two emote walls? Why is that doubled? Red alert. Um, whoa. Embus, thank you for the gifted sub. I won't speak for Rai Cerrone, but I'm sure uh, they appreciate it. <laughs> they needed the emote. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still. I still really want to talk about Jurassic Park, uh, about sci-fi, but I'd, I'd really like to find a paleontologist. There's a lot of Twitch paleontologists, but a lot of them are like too. I feel like they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Why would they bother talking to me? Twitch apparently is a great place for paleontologists. Everywhere you go, people love my emotes. Oh, that's awesome. I, I have noticed that every time I use them somewhere, someone will always comment and then I will, I pass those comments along because I cannot claim that I, I, I created the base emote. I pass those along to the actual artist who is not on Twitch, but he really appreciates the, uh, you know, the praise from strangers via, via the internet and then via me. Everyone knows what a tardigrade is, even on the other side of Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone does. People love tardigrades. That's why I have all the like tiny organisms. I, I chose, chose them. That and because uh, like the first stage of my stream was me desperately trying to find a tardigrade. Now I'm now I'm like tripping over tardigrades. Okay, I thought she was gonna give birth for us. Apparently not. They got featured on Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we talked about that. Oh, maybe not when you were here, Rai. But um, it's funny because I I don't know personally, but I, I am an acquaintance with a scientist who works on tardigrades. And one of the key sci-fi facts that they bring up about, about um, tardigrades in Star Trek Discovery is based on faulty data that this lab here that I know published. They corrected it, but the publish the publishing came out. Surely the tardigrade is like the giant panda of the tiny creature world. Yeah, it's very it's very uh, what's the word? Not gregarious. Maybe it is gregarious. That word that describes like cute and cuddly and funny. I don't know. Uh, the Levamisole might have kicked in and paralyzed her too much. Oh no, too much Percocet. Is there an anti uh, Levamisole? Can I go get some, make myself a coffee and just drop some caffeine in here? That probably won't do it. Meanwhile, this sad little clutch of eggs. They're moving around, they're probably safe. It's very marketable, that's for sure. 
I like the one I like the one on top that's kind of like folded over. They have a very strong caffeine response, really. Huh. Well, I don't know what percent. I guess I could figure out what percent caffeine coffee is. I would be worried because coffee has like a lot of tannins and other. And it's quite acidic. I'd be worried that just dropping straight coffee on them might cause other effects besides just the caffeine. Maybe I can get myself. Oh, caffeine powder. What am I saying? I'll just get some caffeine pills and uh, uh, ground them up. Eggs tend to be safely safety barriers even in the microscopic world yeah i just didn't know if a small molecule like levamisole could get through someone accidentally ordered 10 kilograms <laughs> 10 kilograms of caffeine instead of 10 grams so you literally have a tub of caffeine sitting in the lab wow that sucks also that that says something for the price i i assume Right, because it was like low enough that they didn't think that it was like a strange amount to be paying for 10 grams of caffeine. You can just buy caffeine on a, uh, you know, on Amazon. So I'll do that. I should I should start a little collection of reagents here so we can actually, you know, drop some on some things and see what happens. Okay, I am actually gonna take these off. Because I do worry about them drying out, so I'm gonna I'm taking them off. I'm gonna add a little water to them, uh, and just kind of let them sit to the side. And we'll look at some other things, but we can always come back. So remind me if you'd like to see more of the uh, C. elegans. Yeah, okay, so they're off to the side, so we will, oops, check on them later. Uh, their cuticle is super strong, like resistant to bleach. The eggs are super protected. Oh, cool. <laughs> the worms don't obey my park schedule. Yeah, I put the, uh, I put the goat out and nothing happened. Uh, to get synchronous population, you literally dissolve the, dissolve <laughs> the adults in bleach and recover the eggs. Nice. That's that's actually super useful scientifically. Okay. So, why don't we try some maze shenanigans? Let's get the maze. Oh, too zoomed in. So this is um, one of the mazes. Let's turn that light down. Uh, it's unfortunately not too hospitable. Yeah, so... Um, I don't know if everyone was here when I made these, but basically these are 3D printed tiny mazes. They turned out okay, but you know, you have this well and then you have this channel, you know, a little microorganism can follow the channel Going around some bends, choosing some directions. That's a dead end. I actually don't know the, the route. This might be correct. This might be wrong. Oh, fork in the road. There's clearly some printing errors. Oh, wow. This is actually more complicated than I remember it being. Oh, I solved it. Wow, first try. So I don't know, uh, this was FDM. Uh, I've been talking about it, I just haven't done it. Um, there on the campus that I work on, there are resin print services. I really would like to get something resin printed because I think that will bring the just little bit of accuracy into this that I need. But honestly, I think this printed pretty, pretty well. I mean, these channels are something like 0.4 millimeters in diameter. And, it, you know, there's, they're, except for the odd, like, little bit that's hanging out, they're pretty good, right? So, yes, definitely could be improved, but it's good enough for now. Okay. 
Now, can I get some worms? Okay, I'm going to try the same trick of just adding a little bit of water because unfortunately this is very dry too. I don't think they'll be super, super happy um, without something to sort of swim around in. So we'll try it out. Oh shoot, I just checked. Um, with, with those two new followers, thank you by the way, I'm at 179. Uh, I, I wanted to plan something for like 200, which I will, but I need suggestions because it's actually coming up kind of fast. I've been getting a lot of follows recently, which is great, but I only can think about streams so much during the week. So I need an idea to like celebrate 200. I feel like 200 is a pretty good milestone to celebrate, right? But what should I do is the real question for me. Can't do a hot tub stream because I don't own a hot tub. Unless I suddenly get like a lot more subscriptions. Like a lot. Uh, I don't know. I could uh, recreate Jurassic, Jurassic Park. I would if I could. Believe me, I absolutely would do that. Did we get some contenders? We did. There's some worms in there, but it's a little too soupy. Um, yeah, I'd love to recreate Jurassic Park, but I don't think I'll be able to do that. Cool, we got some. Uh, don't do hot chip, pretty sure the other Marcus nearly died. <laughs> okay, I won't do that. We got a hair, we, we do. We got a couple. All right, so this is my other, wow, we got a few. Oh, they're doing it, they're doing the mace. Uh, it's so, why is it so bright? She's got eggs. She's got places to be. And they're not super swimmers. Um, so this is the other sort of issue with these mazes is that they're a little bit hydrophobic. So getting water into the channels is a major hurdle. And now that I've got them in here, they don't actually swim all that well. I feel like the better choice really would have been to uh, get an extra clean plate, which I won't be able to do for today, right? Yeah, I have some plates that are not made for, well, actually, okay, hold on. <laughs> They're terrible swimmers, yeah. You know, actually, I do have this other plate. It's not made for um, C. elegans, and it's infected with something. Zoom out. So I was just going to show this because it was kind of cool. So this is infected with a fungus, so we can see the fungus right here. But this is what's called an apple juice plates. Um but a fungus infected it. And so now we've got quite a bit of stuff growing on here. But I bet, oh yeah, the hyphae kind of end though. 
on this other section, what this is is auger. It's it's just like squishy, sort of like wet material that maybe they would be able to swim on. Swim, crawl. Maybe they'd be able to crawl on. So I'm gonna grab out a another 3D printed maze that I haven't uh, taken out. So this is what they look like. You can't even see it really. You can just barely see the channels. I need also, I need my X-Acto knife. So I think what we'll, what I can do is I can just sort of place this and squish it down onto this empty auger plate, maybe drop a couple C. elegans on that and maybe they'll be able to swim around, crawl, crawl around. Okay, give that a good little press down more or less into the auger. So, looks fairly similar. Oops. Fairly similar, right? Except for that bottom is now auger. Oh yeah, I bet, okay. Also, this maze is much more simple. It's just a bunch of loops. I think this will work much, much better. Okay. So I will try to scoop up some and drop them here. Scooping, not uh, not using the water technique. Wild type, but they look not that populated. Sterile hermaphrodites. What makes them a sterile hermaphrodite? More dumpy. Don't want dumpy. Males. Ah, wild type. They're very content to just writhe in their pool of bacteria. Same. Okay, I'm gonna have to take this off for, off for a minute. I got one. Oh, look at that. Worm gauntlet. Perfect. Uh, that's a mutant that you made that only makes sperm, so they never switch to making oocytes. Oh, cool. Mog is your term. Masculization of the germline. Cool. Yeah, they, uh, C. elegans has like three letter gene names, right? Like, more or less, I think. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Just trying to get this all nice and even. So what do we have here? GLP, which doesn't have a germline stem cells, doesn't make gametes. Oh, cool. Mostly three and four letter names. So this is my non-paralyzed single C. elegans who I picked out. She is in our, our little maze here. Honestly, I don't think she's going to make that far. You know what, this is actually too zoomed in now. Keep changing my decision. All right, so I gotta take a very quick uh, break to get some water and maybe put on a t-shirt because it's actually very hot in here. I'm gonna take that chance to also grab more batteries for my mouse so that when it's time to end stream, I actually can. What do we got here? Double A's. 
Triple A's. Okay. So I'm just gonna ooh, I'm gonna leave it here so you can watch this. This uh C elegans. Maybe it'll go somewhere, maybe it won't. Where's my mouse? Are you dead again? No, you're not. Okay. I'm gonna turn up the music, turn off my my camera, and I'll be back in two minutes probably. Alright, so stick around.
All right, I'm back. I don't have batteries, so hopefully that doesn't uh, completely die before I need to end stream. And it uh, looks like this yelling didn't quite get so far. Sad. Very, very sad. Let's see. Um, I want to revisit those other ones. And then I actually did also want to take a look at uh, my ongoing uh, lake culture project. So I've been trying to culture this lake sample. We've got lots of little critters growing in it and they change week to week. It's really fun to watch. So let's uh, say goodbye to this one. Goodbye. I can find the top for that. Check back in on our mostly paralyzed C. elegans. Is this it? Yes. All right, they're starting to move. Uh, I added some water to them. Uh, wonder if that diluted anything. Let's see. Whoa. What's this one doing? A lot of curled up sea elegans. Uh oh. All right, I don't know if I'll be able to find that one from before. She was ab around a bunch of eggs, though. Let's examine this one. No, that wasn't it. Is this one still in an eggshell? There we go. Yeah. All right, but we're gonna, we'll find the big one. You agree still in its shell? Yeah. That's a nice big one. See, it was one about this size, just not that one. Hmm, might have to settle, that's fine. Although I, I wanted to check up on her to see if she laid any eggs. Let's be a little bit more systematic about it.
Well, this one's just really nicely laid out. So I can't resist looking at her. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Oops. And I definitely crushed them just now. Whoops. Oops, I thought I did. I guess there, there was a little bit more give than I thought. There she is. Eh, nothing much interesting. All right. Lake sample. It's probably going to be the last thing for today. But we'll see how we'll see what's going on here. Maybe something interesting is happening. So I've been feeding it sort of a combination of like little bits of of uh, plant matter, a drop or two of milk every once in a while, which I had read was something that some of these microorganisms like but that made it very uh what's the word very oily on top which is not good all right Okay. So lots of these little guys, which we've seen a lot before. I've yet to figure out exactly what they are. There's a pretty good amount of algae in this too. I think kind of owing to how well fed everything is. Are these swimming? Oh, yeah. Little swimmers. Then a nice little filter. There we go. Setting up a nice picture for us. I love these little guys. I forget who it was, but someone had a suggestion of trying to figure out how we can get like a, uh, like some food coloring or something in this. And I was thinking what it might do, this might be a job for something that's actually, yeah, that's like 3D printed. Like try and set up one of these in a channel between two wells, let it kind of sit there and start filtering like this. And then one of the wells add the blue dye and maybe that would help sort of direct it all and we could watch the speed of this filtering 
I feel like that might... It's worth a try. Whoa. Alright, but we've seen these guys. We've... We're familiar with them. We know them. They'll be here when we get back. I'm still kind of curious where all the stentors went. Something I've been trying to find. What is this? Kind of looks like it might be a little... A little nothing. The sand is really pretty to look at. There's, you can actually kind of see that there is a little bit of a mix of, of maybe some algae in it. This is something. It's, it needs to move a little, but I, is this a vorticella? kind of in the wrong plane for me to tell exactly. Yes. Wait, actually, it's, I think it, it's a vorticella and a stentor. I think they're very close to, oh, there we go. Very close to one another. Okay, so, right, stentor, is that still there? Yeah. At least I think so. It's it's hard to tell. The one on the left is definitely Vorticella. I think the one on the right is Stentor. It's just hard to get a good look. Oh, there's something else right there. Oh, oh, it's one of the filter. Ah. Maybe if it's broken up a little bit more, we'd be able to see it better. Yeah, okay. So almost got to see what I wanted to see, but it was a little, little crowded. So the vorticella seem to really like organic matter to uh, latch on to. So I'm kind of hoping there'll be something. Oh, there's one right there. Nice. And stable until it gets hit. Then right back at it. When these get going, they really move a lot of water too. Just smaller. All right. So if I can, I'd actually like to see if I can get some copepods or, or daphnia on here as well. Oh, whoa, what is, what is this? Vorticella. I 
a lot of little strands of things, and I don't know if those are something living, like a like a like fungal hyphae or what. That's that's different. What are you? Slash are you anything? Was moving on the inside. But I don't know what this is. Let's see, it's not attached. Well, it's not noticeably attached to anything. Huh. Huh. Oh. It just moved when I tapped it by accident. Could be a, a vortex of let's just waiting around for some nice substrate. Or that just isn't hungry. A lot of these little filtery guys. Maybe maybe that's worth yeah, that's actually worth getting under the microscope. There's so many of them too. It, I'd hope I can grab them fairly easily. All right. All right, now we just have to find them again. So now it's under a cover slip. So if I find them and they stay put, I can uh, go to the highest magnification. And that's assuming I actually grab them. I guess I should go less magnification. They're pretty big. I hope they weren't too fragile that the, uh... oh, a worm. <laughs> Might have been stuck in the pipette tip or it was actually in the, the water. I just didn't know it. That one? I think that might be one, but they're just not settled down. Not settled after transport. Yep, there's one. All right, so they search around a little bit, I guess, first. I hope it parks itself. Hi, Head Jester. Welcome. Yes, they are still taking a nap. I'm going to wait on waking them up. So uh, actually, no tardigrades this stream so far. Not that I've been looking for them. I'm trying to get this little guy who's zooming around. I'm getting, I'm actually hoping he'll take a nap so I can take a closer look. Uh, but yeah, the tardigrades are just, they're just sitting more or less right next to me. 
um, kind of waiting for the right time to wake them back up, uh, which also means just because I, I want multiple, I want more than just the one from last week or ones. So this particular specimen, so earlier I was looking at some round worms, some C. elegans that were sent to me. This one, whoops, is originally from a nearby lake, uh, but I've been culturing it on my desk for a while, pretty successfully. There's quite a bit of movement, quite a bit of life in there. Uh, I was just attempting to get something this thing under the more high powered uh, objective, but I need it to stop moving. They're pretty, pretty slow before and now they're all riled up because I move them. Maybe they don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. So lakes, lakes are pretty great, especially by the shoreline. Um, I've actually tried to take samples from like lakes or small river or not lakes, uh, creeks or small rivers, streams before. They're actually not, uh, not too great. I think the, uh, the movement of the water kind of discourages a lot of the more fun things from growing, or I just didn't know where to take from. All right. Come on, you. I'm getting a little sick of following you around. <laughs> Back from the Sisyphe Sisyphean task of taking a toddler to the grocery store. Well, welcome back. <laughs> I hope I, I hope it didn't take too much longer than you were expecting. What is that? Is that something? No. Okay. It just feels like 20 minutes longer as you scream past the Hot Wheels. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, you're trying to do things like this under a microscope. Uh, for more of the things you do, uh, do I use high dry? I don't actually know what high dry is. So by day i am not a microscopy type scientist i just happen to have one high dry oh i see yes yes i do i did not know that's what they were called yeah so i don't i actually do have an oil lens but it just isn't compatible with my microscope uh, but yeah, I have a four, a four ten and a, a 40 X plus the eyepieces are 16. Hi dry. That's, that's interesting. Oh my gosh, why won't you stop? You never use immersion oil. I mean the app when when you can, it's usually because like the the result is gonna be pretty good. But uh yeah, I don't I don't like using it. Cause that that's the thing. I, I sadly do have a one hundred X. Yeah, that's my immersion oil objective, but uh it just doesn't it's not compatible. I was given it basically. I was told like, here, try this, see if it works. It doesn't fit any of our microscopes. And unfortunately, I even got the oil and unfortunately it doesn't work. It's just incompatible. All right. Well, these stupid things don't want to, uh, they don't want to work for me. So I'm going back to just the larger sample. And actually, I think I might try to grab some of those copepods. I can see them swimming around in the lake sample. Well, that's not the lake sample. So I just have to uh, catch them, basically. 
whoops, as I almost spill the entire thing over my desk, that would have been very fun. Yeah, so, uh, hi, head jester, or yes, I might just call you jester, because your name's, that name's hard to say too fast. Um, do you have a microscope yet? Like you're actively trying to get one, or are you, are you, I don't know, are you trying to figure it out? Uh, someone just got into a heated argument with you that Suck Suck 3000 was a prokaryote in another stream. I would have fallen out of my chair. What? What? Wait, what? How did how did that come up? Wait, yeah. How did that come up? And why were they saying it was a prokaryote? I mean, that's a. That's like a. Easily provable thing. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, that's, you can look that up. Also, I don't understand like why. Oh, uh, you do. Your wife wanted one, and the hospital you work for sold you one of their older ones for five dollars. Wow. Uh, it came with all the lenses, and being a novice, you you were wanting to use the most powerful lens for like everything. Um, yeah. So you, it, it's really dependent on like what you want to look at. Yeah. I would love my more, my most powerful lens to be more useful. It's like a dirty, I can't quite fix it. Um, it's not super great. Uh, but yeah, having the most high powered lens isn't necessarily always the best thing because also if you think about it, it's like when you, when you move between objectives, so like the objective that we're looking at now, the range of like clear thing or, uh, uh, things in focus is like this big but as you go down and down it's more and more uh or it's more and more compressed so at the smallest level you really have to get a slide you have to get a oh sorry hydrate thank you you have to uh get a cover slip you have to get real in focus hopefully the thing you're looking at isn't moving around too much eh. But yeah, uh, the high-powered ones are fun for certain applications. Oh, you were looking at microscope clips. So you sent the one, they started arguing, cussing you out that they were a med student and you needed to learn biology. Oh, no. Oh, no. What was their reasoning? That it was small? What? What a bad take. Also, how dare they? You should have, you should have pinged me or <laughs> sent me a direct message on uh, on Discord. I would have joined. And what would I have brought to the argument? I would have brought a uh, a link to Wikipedia. It's just like, I mean, like, look, this is it right here. Like, this is what they were talking, right? Right? Or no, no, not Vorticella. We were looking at something else. That was suck suck 3000, right? I don't know. Ah, you were in level heads stream. And everyone, everyone was like, do you know who you're arguing with? Good. Oh, let me ask you this. They gave you a blue disc filter type thing you put over the light. Any clue what that's really even for? Yeah, so um, that depends on the application. Uh, certain filters can help uh, 
make certain things look more clear. What's the better way to say that? The filter does exactly what you think it does. It changes what the image looks like. So I have a filter right here. It also might be a polarized filter. So certain things look better under polarized light. So right here is my polarized light filter. Let me, let me just go back. Uh, so I've never found a real use for polarized light, but certain things do require a polarized light filter. Um, different color filters just help certain things pop. So you can get a, you can get them in a whole range of different colors. I don't find them particularly useful, but again, my actual type of like a day-to-day -day science is not microscopy. So I'm sure there's some like much better application for them than I ever use them for. Definitely keep them around. Keep that in your toolkit. Who knows when you might need it. Yeah, so regardless of whatever it was, alt Frizzle, it was a type of ciliate, which is a eukaryote. Also, if you're seeing it clearly on my stream, unless I have, you know, some like T Magnifica somehow, they're going to be, <laughs> if we can see it clearly on my microscope, it's probably a eukaryote. Things like I'm doing here, do I cover my slide? Good question. So no, actually, what I'm using right now is a small dish. So there's actually, you know, a couple millimeters of water in this. So that's why if I like tap it, everything sort of moves around like that. But when I do want to get smaller, two smaller things, I will actually get out a slide and a slide cover. So that makes the, uh, you know, the section of what I'm looking at super, super thin. So that's why I also have on hand a pipette. So that if I do see something interesting, like whatever this thing is right here, we can go, it's just a bit of nothing. We can go to a much higher power. So I'm kind of like transitioning. I, I sort of try to narrate it, but I am sort of transitioning between different things as I'm finding something interesting to look at. Yeah, so uh, really, you know, keep keep every little bit that you can possibly have. Uh, I mean, my my little area over here is filled with like trash. What looks like trash, but they're my uh, microscope tools. <laughs> you know, like forceps and uh, an exacto knife, uh, Pasteur pipettes, micro pipettes, or micro pipette. I've got my slides, my cover slips, my dishes. Dishes are great too because they, they double as culturing vessels and as uh, things to put under the microscope directly. Ah, hello. There you are. Look, a prokaryote. Just kidding. What what are these? What are these? Okay. I gotta find someone who knows ciliates. Okay, so oval ciliate. A hypotrick. Best guess after searching. Ooh, yes, you are correct. I'm looking at something right here. It's 100% what this is. No, I don't want you to. Hypotrick. Ciliated protozoa. They're common everywhere. Yep, they uh, and they do exactly what you think they do. They run those little bristles and looks like they filter through the water that they're in. The term hypotrick comprised all ciliates possessing 
a relatively flattened body shape, strong Siri, which are the groups of, uh, of I believe, large um, uh, uh, hairs that we're seeing. Yeah, so those are the Siri. Oh, he's going over there. Uh, in a large oval region, partially surrounded by uh, an adornal zone of membranelles. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Who knows what particular species, but... Hypotric, hypotric. Oh, there's two. Hypotric. Uh, I really, really, really <laughs> want to get a, uh, oh, I really want to get a, an aquarium, like just a cheap little aquarium from like PetSmart, like a one gallon, half gallon aquarium. I want to throw my lake sample in it and try to cult just culture lake water. Oh, you want to do the same? Yeah. Like, um, it's like, like there's a type of. Yeah, exactly. And just feed it. There's a type of um, aquarium style called like nano tanks or something like that. It's like itty bitty tiny. Uh, oh, look, you actually can see some bacteria in this one. Look at them go. Little, little tiny uh, aquariums. And I feel like they'd be perfect. Unlimited lake water supply. You're thinking of putting a bucket behind school to collect some rainwater to keep it natural. Oh, uh, that that could be good unless unless your your area is prone to pollution and then then you might like acidify it too much, unfortunately. Um, but you know what do I know? That sounds like a great idea. You should do it. Sorry, I got distracted, but. Oh, he left. The copepod. The copepod left. There you are. Hello. You know, I'm not the biggest fans of copepods, but they are pretty reliable to put on a show. Uh, you want to make it like a mini culture of your neighborhood pond? Yeah, that'd be. See, that's a lot of fun. I mean, I want to do the same, basically. <laughs> Just have to get enough substrate uh, to have like a nice active soil culture. And then uh, you basically, I feel like you just have to very carefully balance the amount of like nitrates and phosphates in it. It has demon horns? Uh, kind of. On the front and back. Oh, he's leaving. He left. Yeah, um, I think those are like little antenna feelers. So that was a copepod, um, which is a type of arthropod. I forget though what they're most closely related to. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that. I'm not a huge fan. They, uh, they're the reason my first uh, copepod. They're the first. They're the reason my first tardigrade culture collapsed. At least I think so. Okay, they're they're crustaceans. They're freshwater crustaceans, which means by default they are arthropods, but more specifically they're crustaceans. That's cool. Oh, and then our uh, diatom is still chugging along right there. Our hypotrick. Oh, you finally got a new job. You're once again a Java software engineer. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Had you been looking for long? Wait, yeah, let me do a rave in celebration. Woo. <laughs> That's super exciting though. That's cool. Oh, we got another diatom. There's like a there's a good number of uh 
al algal friends in this one. Which makes me happy because I think that will help feed other things that are in here. I've been trying to play it safe, put it near the the window, but not not too near. I don't want too much direct sunlight. As in, I don't want any direct sunlight. Ooh. Double, double filtering right here. Double ciliates. So we've got our hypo trick. If I can get over there. I just love the the big the big cirrus in the in the back, just kind of like sweeping by. And then we've got our vorticella, which actually looks like it's asleep. You love that they used to be called animacules. Yeah, that's such a good word too. It's very old timey, but it's a good word. You hadn't been looking for long, but retaining, oh, retraining took significantly longer than you expected. Took you about 80 days to get this job. Wow. Oh, he, the, oh, Vorticella just opened back up. I already zoomed out. Still looking for that stentor. Found one stentor so far. I'm only pretty sure it was a stentor. Oh wait, I grabbed all this water because I thought I was picking up bigger things. So I've, I found the, the so copepod, yes. But I also thought that uh, there were gonna be some other things in here. Yeah, well I hope this, the start of the new job goes, goes well. Um, I feel like starting something new is always super exciting. Job security, though, is also very exciting. So I hope you like it. Hope it's a, a stable business. I hope you're properly compensated. All that stuff. Hello. What are you? Are you a lonely vorticella? Yes, you are. Oh, did it attach to the plate? Oh, it did. Oh, he's just he's just attached to the plate. In the middle of nowhere. Vortice, vorticelling. It's with a major bank, which is both good and bad news. Okay, okay. I'll take your word for it. I, I don't know anything about banking or programming professionally. Have I had to move a lot throughout my academic career um move physically not especially um so i was at grad school and undergrad at the same institution so i was there for nearly a full decade which was just long enough for me uh and then since then i've moved once uh, i expect to be moving again sometime within the next two years just because that's how it goes who knows where Hopefully somewhere I like. Uh, so not like a ton of movement. And then, you know, I don't really know what type of academic job I will be pursuing in like a year, year and a half. Uh, but depending on that, there could either mean a lot more moving in the future or pretty much settled in for the rest of my life. Yes, once I finish the uh, my current stage. So the the current stage of my career, which is the postdoc, it's something that you 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 finish it, yes, but it is more like a job than uh, graduate school. So I could just quit tomorrow and like I'm not gonna lose out on a degree or anything like that. I'm not going to do that because I really enjoy what I do, but yeah. But yes, I'm looking towards the next stage, sort of. So like for now, I still work for somebody. Um, sort of the next stage is either I put research aside um, and teach primarily, or I do a little bit of both. 
in which case people would probably work for me. This is, yes, absolutely still the norm, um, depending on the path. So if you want to do teaching, you often have to do a postdoc, um, unless you find your way straight into teaching after graduate school, which you can. It, it's, it's just like grad school is the, like, that is the most normal thing, and then it sort of branches out from there. Okay, I don't know what's moving, but I want to investigate. I believe that's just another Vorticella. Yeah, well, that's a good one, though. That's a nice plane. I appreciate when we can just see something very nice and clearly. What is this string thing, though? Yeah, whatever. Okay. All right, I see that it's almost five. And speaking of research, I do have to run to lab. So I think I'm gonna have to call it here. I did purposefully stream a little longer than normal. Yeah, okay. One more pass. Just one more look. Okay, no, I should stop. Okay.